Bobby was a kid from round the town. Kicks pumped up and head held down underwater more than he was up. Hi everybody, welcome to your weekly broadcast. My name is Lee Honish from Home Advocates. Um, I label myself as the Techno King. I guess I'm the president of this company. Uh, it was an idea that I had about two years ago, and I've been working on it slowly. Uh, I've tried different partners, never seemed to find the right fit. Uh, and over the course of the last six months, I put all the pieces together with a wonderful new group of individuals who are all on board with me and going in the correct direction. We are distressed property solutions. For those of you who don't know what that means, we provide education, training, marketing, uh, mitigation, basically any solution you could think of in regards to distressed property. We have our own uh, iBuyer, eBuyer. We call it our Express Buyer Program. We are brokered by EXP. We have agents who sign up underneath us. We have coaching students who sign up and are a part of our program. More importantly, we do lots of trainings throughout the United States, and that's where I want to kick things off. Today, I'm going to cover three topics with today's broadcast and those that are here live hold all your questions when i'm done going through the content i will answer all your questions and go back through them all one by one uh first thing we're going to cover are the live events second thing we're going to cover our uh data property data so if you're listening to this as a podcast there's a video companion if you're doing a video companion and you want audio we have multiple uh, podcast platforms that you can listen to just go to homeadvocates.io and you can find a way to watch or re-listen to this broadcast. Uh, and the last thing we're going to cover, we're going to cover a little bit of conversion and we'll cover the nine alternatives yet again, like I'm beating a dead horse, uh, because those are the things that get you paid, right? Let's cover the three things that make the most sense. So with all of that said, I'm going to turn this all over to a screen share right now. And... Uh, turn my video off so we don't have any crashing issues. There you go. Welcome to homeadvocates.io. That is our main homepage. Uh, here you can find jump off links for everything that we've talked about right here. Just scroll down. Uh, the thing that we're featuring right now, we're putting up flyers for each of our live events, but just click on where it says live events. Go to homeadvocates.io, click on live events, and that will launch our event page. We have an event page. On that event page, uh, we are happy to announce that we will be doing eight live events in June, starting on June the 14th here in San Diego, actually in East Lake, just outside of Chula Vista, just south of San Diego. Uh, on the 18th of June, we will be in Scottsdale, Arizona. On the 21st of June, that's a Monday, we'll do San Antonio. On the 22nd, which is a Tuesday, we'll be in Houston, Texas. On the 23rd, we will be in Dallas. Then on the 24th, after a substantially long drive for Derek and myself, we will be in Denver, Colorado. On the 25th, we will be in the Capitol building. Yeah, I didn't even make that up. Uh, June 25th, which is a Friday, we'll be in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I believe our venue is inside the Capitol building. Can't even make that up. Uh, Derek and I will take the weekend off in Nevada. And then on Monday, before we head back to sunny San Diego, we will do another live event in Las Vegas at basically our home right now, which is the Sahara West Fine Arts Museum. Just go to homeadvocates.io or homeadvocateslive.com. Either one uh, will get you to where you need to go. There's a full explanation there's a video on what the basic overview of the presentation is, testimonials, information uh, about me, information about Derek, little information about our team, of course, testimonials, what your day will look like. Uh, and there are plenty of links on this page. Just click on whatever event you're going to go to. The links will be lit up. I have to put the rest of these in. These are still three weeks away, but the, the current one, which is San Diego, you just click on it. It will take you over to an Eventbrite page. We use Eventbrite. It seems to be the easiest for everything. The events are 100% free. They're sponsored, uh, and that's how we keep our costs down. Uh, they are about three hours completely capsulated. The events will start. Doors basically open at 10 o'clock. 
Derek will greet you, get you seated, get you registered, answer questions. We'll start between 10.15 and 10.30. Uh, I will speak for about an hour-ish. Uh, Derek will do conversion for about an hour-ish. And uh, I'll wrap things up. And then Derek will answer questions in the back. And hopefully all of us will be in and out of these doors by 10, uh, from 10 to 1, by 1 o'clock. Our, our goal is to get these events done in three hours. My problems in the past are that these events went on tremendously long and they would take up half the day. Because of our rather grueling schedule, uh, we need to get out of these events plus or minus by 1 o'clock and on to our next city. With all of that said, again, all you have to do is remember homeadvocates.io or homeadvocateslive.com. Register for those events. They are free. They are paid for by our sponsor. If you do register, please show up. We would appreciate it. All right, moving forward. Back to our Home Advocates page, right? Uh, what we're going to talk about next is basically uh, our Academy page. Uh, we do have a program and we do have a system. We sign real estate ag agents up to be a part of our program. There are two ways to join our program. Uh, the first is to pay one-time low set fee. The other is to join us uh, through eXp. Whatever your solution, just go to Home Advocates, click on sign up and get educated. That'll take you over to our Academy page. Click on get started. It will explain the whole program for those that want to pay a one-time set fee, right? So if you're with eXp already or you want to stay with your brokerage, you have no choice. Go to homeadvocates.academy or homeadvocates.io and uh, learn about our process and our program. If you would like to join us and be a part of eXp, we do recruit for you. We do get you higher commissions. There are a lot of advantages to being eXp as uh, our agents who sign up underneath us in eXp, we actually recruit agents in their market underneath that agent. It is to our benefit for more people to get more listings uh, because we have an express buyer program and everything sort of built in. Uh, if you're interested in joining us and being a part of eXp, what we'd like you to do is right on the front page, real simple. Uh, you can contact us. Just go click on meet our team and that's our contact page, right? Uh, we recommend that you talk to Jen. So send an email to jen at homeadvocates.io, 833-969-4673. If you have any questions about signing up uh, in any way, shape or form, if you're upgrading your previous AMS or Monster user, uh, you won't be getting any more links uh, sent out in the email. Uh, those that didn't sign up for the monster upgrade for free or any of that stuff, they all have to be sent out manually now. I've done my very best over the last month. I have notified everybody who ever was a coaching student. I'm just not going to keep sending out links blindly because I can't really dictate whether or not they're sending it to someone else. So uh, call 833-969-4673. If you are interested in upgrading or being a part of our program, or joining us with eXp. Just call 833-969-4673. Cool. We did all that. Moving on. Let's talk about real content for today. And today's content, we're going to cover two basic topics, right? Uh, the first real con uh, thing we're going to talk about is data. So I have been compiling data for our coaching students over the last three weeks now. Uh, I am expecting the results to come back from one person today. Uh, I've also purchased Property Radar. Uh, they currently have a free program if you want to try it out. And I just want to show you guys how crazy the numbers actually are. What you're looking at is the basic search screen for Property Radar. So what I'm going to do is just show you San Diego County. I'm not doing the entire United States. I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible for all of you, right? So we're gonna do San Diego County. Uh, there it is in all its beautiful glory on the screen. Uh, what we're going to do is our normal uh, search parameters. And I wanna go through each of these, right? So they allow you to map it. That's nice. They allow you to create a quick list. 
which I haven't really explored. They have types of properties and structures. You can do single family residence. First one that I care about uh, is really starting to come up, but all of these things are available, right? Um, what you really wanna do is go under ownership type, right? Um, and make sure that everything is clicked off. Sometimes they're not, which is remarkable to me. Value and equity is for everybody who's looking for a short sale, which to me is kind of weird that people do that. Um, I'm not looking for those particular things. What I really care about is uh, foreclosure details and status, right? So in foreclosure, uh, you're gonna add the criteria and yes, and add the criteria. Simple as that. So here's the really interesting thing about this particular number I'm showing you, because it looks really impressive at this moment. And if you look, it kind of gives you a heads up of how many it is, right? Um, and they tell you basically what it is. What I found interesting about looking at these numbers these are things that are closed as well as open. The green ones are the interesting ones. Those are the new ones. So if you're wondering in a historical perspective of how crazy these numbers are, uh, they're predominantly low, like they're like non-existently low. They don't even make sense. So to get around this, uh, what I did was go to pre-foreclosure details and uh, then, default date, you can do default dates, but I've been playing around with these literally uh, all day to try to get to where I was after. So I've, I made sure they weren't listed for sale. Um, I don't, I, I, oh, it's still got my regular search in here still. I only want them to be active. Um, I wanted, uh, I'm very big on this, I'm gonna tell this no. I'm gonna show you why in a second. Update criteria. Watch the numbers go to nothing. Like there's nothing there. Doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna to go to foreclosure. I'm going to go to auction pre-foreclosure details. And then I'm going to, wait, where is it? Now I'm in it. This thing is so confusing. I don't know how anybody uses this. I mean, I got what I was after in all of this. Uh, where are you? You're under foreclosure. I want it under document. There you go. I want just NOD, add criteria. Look closely. There's nothing there. I just asked for NODs. There are no NODs. How's that even a thing? How's that even a thing? That's crazy to me, right? I am completely fascinated with that. Completely. I am completely fascinated with all these things. Like somehow they turned everything off. And I have gone through here and played with clicks and everything you can think of. Um, you name it, I've played with literally every single, uh, <laughs> every single button, anything you can imagine, anything you can humanly imagine, I've really kind of played with, right? The only one that gives me any kind of results is this. The only issue I have with this are the fact that some of these are actively in control by the bank or some of these are actively uh, in foreclosure. It's the green numbers, the ones that I'm interested in. And this is based on the current market. This is literally and theoretically impossible. So what I had to do was rewind the clocks to 18 months ago to people that had canceled sale dates, uh, canceled foreclosure dates, uh, and I rewound everything. So this, Here's the truth of this number. This number is actually, for the data that I could pull, because I believe we have Marvin in the area, the number I came up with that I'll be sent to Marvin is about 700 properties um, that he can look through and work with. Cool. So that's what's going on. They, they have literally 
figure it out somehow magically, and I don't know how they did this, to do that, to turn everything off. If you're wondering how that works because you pay your mortgage, I don't know. Uh, I would be very upset if I was someone who wasn't taking advantage of forbearance agreements or credit or any of those things for that matter. It's all very fascinating to me, especially going around in here. I think I might be the only one using property radar these days. I'm the only one talking about pre-foreclosure property. So what we're doing for our agents is we're pulling the last 18 months of information for you. And we're sending that out. Should be out in the next 24 hours. I just sent it over to Fritzy. If not, I'll pull it from property radar. This thing to me is very unfriendly about pulling. Um, it's just super unfriendly. I don't like it. I mean, I know how to use it, but because of this flaw in the system where the I have to go in and actually tweak dates to pull things up prior to March of 2020. And that's the information I'm after. And I have to do it for individual counties. Uh, so it's a last worst case resort. And I don't wanna think about it because that could be a very ugly Thursday for me pulling data, but it works out to be about 700 properties to the county, which is still a predominantly low number, but it's enough to get everybody started. Uh, these will be people that were in notice of default, notice of sale, list pendants, depending on where you are in the country. And uh, you need to approach them. You need to start creating the conversation. That's really what we're after. Because it's either going to be July 1st or January 1st. Pick your poison. Uh, there is a rumor. Uh, I believe it was Marvin who sent it to me that they're now thinking of extending everything to December 31st, which would be great. I would love that. We'll give you guys more time with the uh, people in your county that were in default before because there is a truism within the world of foreclosure. People who don't pay, don't pay. So once this is all lifted and it starts going back on their credit, there is no way. <laughs> How do I explain this? Um, there are only two outcomes for those of you that want to work in distressed property for what's about to happen to the market. Only two. I feel like I should put myself on camera for this. <laughs> Let's stop sharing and I want to put this on camera for a second. There are only two things that can happen in the current market based on the data, okay? Number one, we go back to what is a normal default rate or a normal rate of people who have a notice of default or a notice of sale or a less penance. That's approximately a million and a half to two million people prior to what I'm now labeling in Marvel fashion the blip, right? If you go with what I think they have to do, which is pull the Band-Aid at some point, right? The government isn't going to cure this because it'll piss off somebody. Let's say that they find a way to cure this or the state cures it. What does that say to everybody who's actually made their payments and has been honest up till now? See, that will affect who gets elected next. And that's a big thing to remember here because all of this is based on people getting elected and reelected. I don't believe in right. I don't believe in left. I believe in politicians getting reelected because that's their job. Okay. Whether or not I believe in their policies, it doesn't matter. I just play ball with whatever I, I have. Right. So either I go back to what the national average is, which is a million and a half or 2 million people in default, which is great. We can all work with that. That's still an area of real estate that most real estate agents aren't going to want to work in. Or number two, they pull the bandit, which is more than likely going to happen because people who don't pay, don't pay. So there would even be fallout from people um, getting a boost. Let's say that the government does step in or they somehow magically figure out how to zero out credit or they magically bail out all the renters and all the mortgage people and allow them not to make payments and stay in their house uh, and tough crap for everybody who made their payments. Let's just say they do that, right? Because I've heard that said to me and it's the most preposterous outcome of all of them, in my humble opinion. That's 11 million to 14 million people. You're talking with FHA loans somewhere in the range of 14% of their FHA loans are delinquent and they're not talking about it, right? I posted this on social media but they're estimating somewhere between 10 and 20% of all FHA loans are delinquent because of COVID. That's a big deal, right? 
Those are federally insured. That's a whole different ball of wax. So these things all add up. What does it add up to? Are there jobs? <laughs> Is there an economy to support people paying for these houses? Can you keep providing checks? I mean, what what are you what does everybody think is going to happen? And I have talked to a lot of people in the industry, those that collect data, those that provide data, those that work with the data, people who work in the distress field. Um, and remarkably, everybody who believes that this real estate market is one of the hottest real estate markets in recent history and that nothing bad is going to happen, all say the same thing. And it's exactly what I heard in 2006. Nothing bad is going to happen to this market. We're just going to keep making money forever and keep printing loans and keep, it'll be awesome. The exact same thing I heard in 2006. Anytime everybody is on board in real estate with the market is awesome, that's when I start to get worried personally. Uh, from a data standpoint, what I find most interesting about all of this is that I know that there's 11 to 14 million people who haven't made payments that are going to come due on a forbearance agreement or are not able to make their payments. And at some point, they're all going to filter back onto the market. Hopefully it happens slowly because we do do, uh, we do do, we provide for our agents leads, right? And you're simply not going to be able to handle that many leads. That's why I'd like you guys for now until the end of the year, try to knock down these last 18 months of people, right? Whether or not they tell you they have a forbearance agreement or a loan mod or everything is great, that's fine. You've got to go meet with them. You've got to start creating a relationship because that's what creates the drip line, right? This is about your long-term success. Everybody who works with us in Home Advocates. Uh, our goal is to get you on a drip line of listings. That is what I provide for you, right? I give you the initial lead. You go and put up the marketing. You go and talk to the homeowner. You give me back the information and we put them on a drip line until they make a decision. Those that have worked in distress know this. They're going to exhaust every possible outcome before they call you and uh, ask you to, as we like to call it, a dignified solution. Our answer is what we call the dignified solution. There are three of them. Loan mod, forbearance agreement, or selling their house. All three of those will get you paid in loan mods and forbearance agreements that will get you weekly pay, right? You split what the processing fee of that is if it is successful. If it is not successful, guess what? It's probably going to be a sale of the property. Just that simple. So we are creating solutions for, in theory, 11 million people. Uh, I don't have enough time or energy to cover the country and get a thousand agents into place before this all happens, which is why I picked EXP. Hopefully those of you that have signed up with us under EXP understand the severity and nature of about what's to occur. If you're not, then I don't know why you would be involved with us. I really don't. You should go and chase canceled and probates for that matter. I am preparing for a market that is literally inevitable in two ways, right? Either it goes back to normal and it's a couple million people, which it won't be. It'll be more than that, no matter what. Or it's going to be a thunderstorm, which is what I have been told by literally everybody who provides data, like 11 million people waking up one morning and being immediately six months delinquent. And they can do that. They will do that. It has been the government that has been forcing the banks and controlling interests to not do that by threats, actually. I actually read an article where Biden has threatened everybody not to take action. Threatened. I'm not even sure how the government could step in and do that, but they're threatening, right? So if you're a private investor or you're a bank or you're a mom and pop who owns a house and you all of these things are, are crazy to me because you're affecting half of society one way or the other. There's no win scenario here. There, this is a no win scenario and there's no way out. It's unfixable. Either way, the solution that we've created will cover whatever happens. And it's going to happen. Whether or not they just keep pushing this back indefinitely until Biden's out of office, maybe. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how long you can keep pushing it back. Uh, it doesn't particularly matter to me because at some point, somebody is going to start foreclosing. One of the private lenders will start to do it at some point. That's reality. 
you can't keep doing this. You're going to put, uh, you know, business owners and banks out of business. This is millions and billions of dollars. You can't keep forbearing properties. You can't keep loan modding properties. It's impossible. People, uh, I live in a reality where if you don't pay, you don't get to keep your house. That's just the reality I live in. I pay the bills here <laughs> before the end of the month because I don't think that my uh, the people that I lease from or my service providers would allow me to continue to live here unless I did that. So you have to look at this objectively. Uh, if you are not fully invested in this philosophy, then you, I really have no idea why people are involved with this. You have to see this coming. This is literally a train coming down the track. With that said, let's go back to the screen, shall we? Let's move forward. That was my whole take on data. It's really, really interesting to me. The data itself is really interesting. So uh, we're back over to the Home Advocates coaching page. And again, if you have interest in joining Home Advocates as an EXP agent, or you want to upgrade, or you want to invest for the first time, go to homeadvocates.io, click on Get Started. Right up in the top left-hand corner is our phone number, 833-969-4673, or 833-WOW-HOPE. Talk to Derek, talk to Jen, get started today. Because if you do believe what I am telling you, fundamentally and to your core, cool. Jump on board with us and I will help you get there. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the Home Advocates marketing system for a minute and cover a couple of points before I start taking questions. We have three modules that you get. I'm working on two more. Uh, two more training modules right now. Uh, there will be a third marketing one uh, just for our existing people that are already in the system starting next week. On Tuesday, you will have an additional coaching call. It will just be marketing with me on Tuesdays. On Wednesday, it will be this sort of a general call that I turn into podcasts and videos and anything else I can think of, plus Q&A, uh, general topics. Uh, then on Thursday, another private home advocates only call, which will be with just Derek doing scripting and conversion. If nobody shows up because we only have, I think, about 20 people right now in the system. Uh, if nobody shows up, Derek's going to record something and call it a day, uh, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. But we'll archive all of them and we'll make them all available to you. If you have not done your one-on-one -on -one, or you do not see your name on the list at this moment and you have not done your one-on-one, -on -one, I think the name that jumped out that wasn't on here was Doug Gillis. Uh, send me an email so I can get you a link to get you on here so you can schedule. Jan, I think, needs to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Regina does. Sarah does. Lily Bell, I think, did. Richard just did. Marvin did or didn't. I don't know. Hermaine, maybe. Fleischman, maybe. Catherine Regal, you're in the program. You need to do a one-on-one -on -one with Derek. Just send him an email. It's in the system. I think Brendan's okay. I think we're okay. I think there are a couple of people who have not filled out their links that upgraded. Uh, if that's the problem, send me an email, lee at honish.io, or call 833-969-4673. Cool. Glad we could cover that. Let's move forward. Inside the Home Advocates Marketing System, if you scroll down through all the different training modules, the one we're going to talk about today is in the library. Click on library, and it will take you over to this page. Click on where it says click here to download current library and it will take you over to, let me rewind, will take you over to this uh, Google Doc Drive. Click on uh, meeting package, right? I'm going to show you what we're going to cover today. I am going to hammer on this for a while until everybody who's in Home Advocates can recite these to me and not... <laughs> If you come to an event and you're actually currently an existing coaching student, uh, don't be surprised if I walk up to you and say, tell me the nine alternatives to foreclosure, because I think they're that important. Uh, you'll click on it. It's the document over here to the right. We have complete packages that you can take on each of the meetings. This is it, right? Down at the bottom, replace your logo, put your information at the bottom, including your license number and everything else. I think that this is crucial when going on your appointment. Uh, we've covered it. Uh, maybe we'll do it next week. The 
I think the three primary documents to take on your appointments, right? We already know that the marketing system itself works. Most of you have been with me for close to a decade. You already know that this marketing uh, approach that I've created works. Uh, it's what got me named the most innovative marketer in America. And it just works. <laughs> so what it really comes down to is meeting with the homeowner. So I want to just go through it briefly again and show you how you guys are going to get paid. First is do nothing, right? Which is what most of them do. The reason you're at their door is because they do nothing. Um, they're going to lose their house at some point. There is not going to be a magical situation where somebody comes in and bails them out. The government is not going to fix the problem. I, I find it really hard as a former banker to digest that the government would completely bail out people who do nothing. I, it's mind-boggling to me. Like I've never seen it. I've been doing this since 88 and I have never seen that situation. Uh, number two is pay off or refinance. You don't have to worry about this as an option. You have to learn it, right? Which is um, we've been trying to work on this right now. Uh, I think people are being a little too honest when they fill out their loan applications for refinance. Here's what I've learned about this. Right, so when you're paying off or you're re or really doing a refinance, what I've seen is that homeowners that are refinancing are very honest on their applications. As a guy who survived the aughts, the 90s, and the 80s of watching people do stated no doc, low doc, spit and spackle loans, uh, I don't know why honest people are honest on their contracts. Period. I I just. I'm completely fascinated with it. Uh, your clients are going to fill out whatever they're going to fill out because they're legally and morally obligated to do so. But the minute you tell the bank that you, you are in default or you haven't made a payment or that you got a forbearance agreement or that you're in a loan mod, you might as well kiss that refinance goodbye. I'm just being honest. And most of the deals I've seen right now on refinance are pretty much, they're just looking at the opening loan, loan app. Uh, what I found interesting when I went down the road of refinance and looking into it and I was completely fascinated with this, was that somebody was trying to convince me that there was a magical system out there between the banks and the mortgage brokers that would tell you whether or not they had a forbearance or a loan mod or that they missed payments because credit is not indicating it. Uh, there is no way to look on title to see those things. Uh, and I did a deep dive and I researched this for everybody. Here's how they find out. Your clients, your homeowners who want to refinance, put it on their loan application and then are quite surprised that they can't get a refinance. Actual. Number three is written statement. You don't have to worry about this, but this is paying off uh, the entire defaulted amount. At 31 days at 5 p.m., you are 30 days late. From that point forward, you are considered in default. That's the banking term. At that point, you uh, have to reinstate your loan, and that can happen all the way up until the day of the stale. Uh, that's the entire money owed, plus taxes, fees, license, undercarriage spray, or anything else some crappy guy like me at a bank will figure out. So since your clients don't have money, you don't have to worry about number three as well. Number four, loan modification, the first one that will get you paid. Utilizing the existing mortgage company to rewrite the terms of the loan to allow them to make payments that they can handle. This isn't gonna fix their credit. It's not gonna do anything great for them, but it will keep them in their house. We are creating a loan modification program to help people do loan modifications. Uh, the fee will be held in escrow because in literally almost every single state, you cannot accept money from a homeowner who is in default. Technically, that's not true right now because nobody's in default. Just saying it out loud for the room. Um, nobody is technically in default at this moment. You could theoretically do loan mods without worrying about any of the overhead. It's really based on whether or not somebody is considered to be in default. And technically, nobody is in default right now. I just thought I'd say it out loud. However, the way our company runs this, uh, we put the money into escrow. If it is successful, we do billable hours. If it is not successful, we refund the money. Simple as that. Uh, if they are not successful, this is going to convert out to a sale. That's why I say, don't worry about whether or not you get paid. 
Loan mods and forbearance agreement, number four and number five. Forbearance is putting uh, what they owe on the back end of the loan and letting them continue to make the payments. In both of these cases, they're both packages that have to be presented to the bank correctly by a qualified individual. The way of letting a homeowner just call the bank and doing this is the worst way to do it. Uh, it won't get structured correctly. They won't have the right contracts. Uh, we have gone to a lot of trouble of purchasing really high-end software that is completely updated by the banks to help people get loan mods and forbearance agreements. We uh, here at Home Advocates will split whatever we make with our agents. You are our sales agents at the end of the day. So whatever money is made on a loan mod or a forbearance agreement, only if it's successful after the terms are complete and the escrow is released, we will split that with you, which means for those agents that are working with us, you will get paid pretty much weekly for meeting homeowners. Because for those of you who've never worked in distress, here's a real fact. Loan mods and forbearance agreements are basically the number one and number two thing that people are gonna try for, okay? Simple as that. Now, if they're denied for that, then you just jump to number nine. They're just gonna move straight in. Number six, partial claim, right? A loan from a lender for a second loan to pay off costs and fees, that's not gonna happen. See refinance, see reinstatement, same problem. Be in loot foreclosure. This is the cash for keys cat category. Uh, I'm completely fascinated with this category because you get the words foreclosure on your credit uh, for like five grand. You actually get paid to put the words foreclosure on your credit to give back your keys to the bank and hope everything's cool as cucumbers. Um, it's not. You're still going to get the words foreclosure on your credit. It's still going to follow you around and you're going to have a real problem trying to rent once you've had a foreclosure on your credit. Take it from a guy who leases this property, what they look for when they're looking <laughs> into your background. The words foreclosure are not really high on the list. And with literally millions and millions of people about to be evicted from properties around the United States and people looking for new rental situations, which is what most of them are doing right now before it affects their credit. They're out looking for rentals as we speak. They're jumping from property to property. Um, it's going to be really hard to rent unless you have really sterling uh, credit. Just my experience. Number eight, bankruptcy. All right, chapter seven is the route to go, but that doesn't save your house. Truth. Uh, the one that everybody thinks uh, that... I honestly believe that homeowners believe that chapter seven will keep their house for them. Uh, it's not true. Banks always win. Chapter 13 is the one that you actually want, which is setting up an easy payment of debts. Uh, including your house payment, so that you can keep everything. Uh, there Again, I've been meaning to put up this 60 minutes piece about chapter 13, which is, it's a, it's a farce. It's, it's comical. Like chapter 13 doesn't really exist. Uh, it is a great idea on paper. Uh, I will once again, try to get this in the coaching room and try to get it up. I keep forgetting to do it. I will get the 60 minute piece on chapter 13 in the United States. Chapter 11 is a business reorganization unless they bought their house as a business, don't worry about it. And option nine, the one that gets you paid the most, uh, the sale of the property, right? So they're gonna try number four, they're gonna try number five, and the other one that you will see them try to do is number one, right? But 33% of their options will get you paid. And sale is the one that we consider part of a dignified solution. We have an iBuyer, eBuyer, Express Buyer program, whatever you wanna call it. We've gone to great, uh, a great length to get that iBuyer program so that you guys can get paid your full commissions. I know right now in the market, everybody's cutting their sales end of the commission to get listings and do whatever they have to do. We don't believe in that. We want you to get paid full commissions. Our EXP agents get three and a half percent on the seller side of the transaction. We try to get the transaction up and down within a couple of weeks. We try to get the homeowner money, uh, there's just so much to handling four, five, and nine correctly that's to their benefit. And it's your job to go to the door and explain these things to them, right? What still blows my mind, and I'll end this particular section on this, right? Uh, let me turn off the screen share. Um, what still blows my mind as a guy who's worked in the bank, there are two facts that blow my mind. Number one, 
why would anybody who's missed a payment call the bank for help? That's mind blowing to me. That's number one. Number two, that is still extremely mind blowing to me. How are there foreclosures ever? Like, how does somebody do nothing and let the bank take the property back over? How is there a deed in lieu of foreclosure? Like, how does any of this exist? I have been doing this since 1988. By the age of 21, I had already thrown out like 100 families from their house in the old days, the hard ways in the 80s. Um, I still don't understand historically for everything that I've worked on, everything that I've done, everything that I've covered um, in this world of distressed properties. Why do people allow foreclosures to happen? Why don't they sell their house? Why don't they get the money out of the walls? And I'll keep going back to it. Poor education. Nobody is taking the time because in the world of real estate, it's too hard, which is why we've simplified this down to as much as we can. Like, we can't simplify this process any further for you. Take the list we give you. Go put the marketing pieces up that we give you. Go provide this information and educate the homeowners exactly as we tell you to do. Send me back their, uh, their email and their phone number so that I can start a follow-up campaign because they're going to do four, five, or nine. They're just going to do loan mod, forbearance, or sale. That's it. Those are the three outcomes for almost everybody who has missed a payment. And so all you really have to decide, is it going to be millions of people, like a couple of million coming up? Or is it going to be tens of millions of people? And that's what decides whether or not you want to work in this field. If you want to keep knocking on doors and chasing canceled and expireds and probates, cool. Okay, cool. I'm not going to begrudge anybody that wants to deal with that level of competition, especially with COVID-19 being over. And now the 65-year-old crowd coming back online to start networking and door knocking and handing out their baskets of groceries to try to get listings. I'm here to focus on people who want to help people. That has been my mission since I've opened this con uh, company. Uh, it's to be of service. It's to try to give back because I have done some particularly crappy things to homeowners and I'm just trying to make it right on some level. Uh, I will say it one last time. Join us live at our upcoming events. Go to homeadvocates.io. If you want to find out about joining us, go to homeadvocates.io. Uh, I think that covers everything that you guys should want to know about. If you have any questions, 833-969-4673. Call right now. EXP, joining our program, upgrading, seeing us live. How about coming to your office? We'll do that too. 833-969-4673. Go to homeadvocates.io.